Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we are looking at accounting reconciliations and we are focusing on creditors reconciliation. So this is for all my grade 11s and grade 12s out there. Stay tuned until the end of the video. We are looking at a past exam paper on creditors reconciliation. I'm the general and this is the masterclass. <music> So guys, like I said, we are looking at a question paper today, past exam paper of November 2023, and we are doing question 1.2. The information relates to SEP traders for August 2023 required 1.2.1, taking into account the errors and omissions, calculate the correct balance for the creditor's control account and the creditor's list, indicate changes with plus for an increase and a minus for a decrease, that's for 9 marks. And then 1.2.2 says SEP traders intend settling the account of Pluto wholesalers on 31 August 2023. Calculate the amount due to them. That's for three marks. Then we've got two parts to our information. Information A is the balances of both the creditor's control account and the creditor's list, as well as the individual list of creditors and their balances. Then in B, we've got errors or omissions and we've got about five of them and we will be going through each one of them in detail one by one in this video now let's start at the top so the first thing to note here guys is when we are doing a reconciliation it means that there are two figures that are not agreeing and we are trying to find out why they are not agreeing and we fix it hence the name reconciliation so in this case the two that we are dealing with is the creditor's control, which is coming from the general ledger, while the creditor's list comes from the creditor's ledger. So it means the balances we are getting from these two are not agreeing. And as you can see, we already have the provisional balances here that we took from the question as given. So we are going to start with all these transactions one by one number one the total of the creditors allowances journal was understated by three thousand six hundred the total of the creditors allowances journal was understated by three thousand six hundred where is this going to affect this is going to affect the total because remember, what we are told here is the total of the creditor's allowances journal. So this wouldn't have affected the individual creditors. So all our figures from the creditor's list would have been fine because in the creditor's list, we don't deal with totals in the creditor's ledger. However, this total would have affected our creditor's control account in the general ledger. So we are going to go and fix that. That's number one. Number two. This understating of the creditor's allowances journal, how does it affect the balance? Remember, creditor's allowances journal, guys, are returns that we are taking back to our suppliers to say these goods are defective, we don't want them, and we would like you to reduce them from our balance. So creditor's allowances reduce the credit balance. Now, in this case, the creditor's allowances journal was actually understated which means there is a 3,600 that has not been subtracted. It was supposed to be subtracted, but it has not yet been subtracted. So we come over to our creditor's control side and we say we are going to subtract 3,600. Then it's not going to affect our creditor's list. So we leave it as is. We go to number two. A payment of 14250 made to Pluto wholesalers was in error posted as 15240 to the creditor's ledger account. Posting to the general ledger was correct. So that last statement there is already telling us that this does not affect the general ledger because posting to the general ledger, which is our creditor's control, was correct. So the correction here is going to have to be made where? In the creditor's list. Now let's examine what type of error happened here. 
a payment of 14,250. So the actual payment is 14,250. Was in error posted as 15,240. So we kind of deceived ourselves into thinking we paid 15,000 can't we paid 14,000. So we overstated our payment which over reduced our balance because our balance was reduced by 15,000 instead of 14,000. So how do we fix that? We have to find out that difference which in this case is 990. You just subtract those two figures. That difference is what we have over reduced our balance by. So we are going to go to correct it and add it. So we come over to number two here. We say we are adding plus 990. Why 990? Because it is the difference between the two. So let me just fix my 90 here. Right. Hi guys, sorry to disturb your video. I'm just here to discuss with you three ways in which you can support the channel. Number one is to watch the ads. So guys, the ads that come before the video, during the video, and after the video are linked to this particular video that you are watching. If you don't skip the ads and you actually watch, we're going to be rewarded by the advertisers. Then number two is to invite me as a guest speaker to your event at your school, a school function, prize giving day, revision classes, and so on. I'll gladly come. Number three, we've got the Masterclass Level Up program, which is designed for all those who want to write their exams in May and June of 2025. We are covering three subjects, accounting, business studies, and economics. All the information you need is in the description box below. Now let's get back to the video. Then we go to number three. An invoice received from Planet Suppliers, 9,540 and recorded in the creditor's journal, which means it was recorded properly in the creditor's journal, was posted in error to the account of Pluto wholesalers in the creditor's ledger. So what happened here? We took one amount, which was supposed to be for creditor A, and we put it in another creditor B. So instead of planet suppliers, creditor A, it went to Pluto wholesalers, creditor B. Now, that did not make a difference because it was recorded in the creditor's journal correctly. Then that means it would have been taken also to the general ledger as such, which is correct. However, when it went to the creditor's ledger where we have uh, creditors one by one, we just vice versa between these two, which would not affect the list because the list, remember, is a total of all the creditors. So there is an error, yes, but this kind of error would not affect the total, either in the creditor's list as well as in the general ledger, our creditor's control. So here we are going to have a zero and a zero on the side. I hope you understand, guys. If you are not sure or you did not understand, you want me to clarify something, Please just let me know in the comments so I can be able to respond to you. Then we go over to number four. Goods returned to Mish traders, 7,500, and recorded in the CAJ, was posted to their account in the creditor's ledger as an invoice. So remember, guys, I said we always trace the transaction to see what happened and then we find out where the mistake is and reverse it. So let's go again. Goods returned to Mish dealers, 7,500, and recorded in the CAJ. It was recorded correctly in the CAJ, Creditors Allowances Journal, which means if it was correct in the Creditors Allowances Journal, it would have been posted as such to the creditors control account, uh, to the general ledger, which means there wouldn't be an error as far as creditor's control account in the general ledger is concerned. The problem comes when it says it was posted to their account in the creditor's ledger as an invoice. So um, it was put in the right account, but the type of transaction was misrepresented because we are returning goods to them to say these are goods of 7,500 that we are retaining because they are defective. We don't want them reduce our balance by 7,500. But in error, it was posted in their account in the creditor's ledger 
as an invoice as if we are buying goods for 7500 so that means the error that happened was this 7500 was added to their account to say we are owing them 7500 thinking that it is an invoice we are buying but that was not the case so now we have two issues here number one there is a 7500 that was entered that it was not supposed to be added there. then the actual uh, deduction of 7500 has not happened so we have to reduce 7500 that was entered in error it was added we have to subtract it then after we do that, we also have to take another 7,500, which was the original return and subtract it, which means we are going to subtract a double amount, which is 7,500 times 2. We are going to be subtracting a total of 15,000 under creditors list, a total of minus 15,000. First 7,500 to correct the error and the second one, which is the actual entry. And like I said, because it was recorded in the CAJ, it is not going to affect our creditor's control. Then we come over to number five. SEB traders recorded a purchase of 13,280 from aerial suppliers in the CJ after deducting a trade discount of 20%. So this is what we did as SEM traders. However, aerial suppliers informed them that the trade discount agreed on was only 10%, not 20%. So what is the error here? The error is that we subtracted 20% instead of 10%. So they recorded a purchase of 13,280 from aerial suppliers in the CJ after deducting a trade discount of 20%. So we have to find out how much was this figure before deducting the 20%. I'm going to show you a method that I use to deal with this. Just a little bit of mathematics. So we are going to say, fine, there was, so I will compare here, 13,280. We are saying that amount is now representing only 80% of the original amount. How did I arrive at that? Remember they said SEB traders recorded a purchase of 13,200 from aerial suppliers in the CJ after deducting a trade discount of 20%. Meaning that the 13,280 is what is left after deducting 20%. So we are interested in finding out how much was it or Let's start at saying, what is 100%? Now, to do that, we compare. Obviously, 100% is going to be more than 18,280, which gives us our fraction here. 100% over 80 times 18,280. Our answer there is going to be 16,600. This amount was 16,600 before it was tempered with. So let's check now. What happened? We recorded a 20% a discount instead of a 10% discount. So we recorded double what we were supposed to record. We have to take half of that. And what we recorded there, the 20% would have been 3,320. This is what we recorded, which is double what we are supposed to record, 1,660. So this one here is 20%. This one here is 10%. You can just check this in your calculator, guys. When you take the figure that we got, 16,600 original figure, the 20% we did, it means we recorded 3,000. 320. Then the 10% we're supposed to do is 1,660. So it means that we need to go back and say we over subtracted. We need to add back what we were not supposed to subtract that we subtracted, which in this case will be the 1,660. And this is going to affect both sides, which is our creditor's control and our creditor's list, because we had no idea at any point that this was happening. 
so the error was made on both sides so we come here we record plus 1660 plus 1660 now if we have done everything correctly and we add the following figures starting with this figure this figure this figure and this figure then we are going to get a total this side if we punch that is going to be 174,000. Then we also add this figure, this figure, this figure. Not necessarily add, I mean add or subtract depending on the sign that we have. We are also going to get on this side 174,000, which means our reconciliation has been successful because even though our figures started by being different, they are now equal. Thank you so much for watching the video. Watch out for more accounting videos. If you are not subscribed to the channel, kindly subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the content that we are churning out. I will see you next time. God bless you.